ladies and gentlemen. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. The service will start shortly. I'll ask that everybody take their seat. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to the celebration of Ron Rhodes' life. Our celebrant officiating today is celebrant Barb Rossi. I'm going to turn the service over to Barb Rossi. Good morning. My name is Barb Rossi, and I'm honored to be the celebrant today during our time together remembering Ron Rhodes. Before we get started, can we just take a quick second to turn off any cell phones or electronic devices? Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Ron's family, I welcome you and thank you for being here. Whether Ron touched your life personally or you came to show your support for his loved ones, your presence here is important. Ron's family wants today to be a day of celebration for someone who lived a full life. And also, we acknowledge that there is grief in the loss of Ron. And it will be the memory of the friends who stood by them during this time that will be a source of strength and consolation for Ron's family as they carry that grief. And we'd also like to remember today those who can't be with us to pay last respects to Ron. It means a great deal to Ron's family that you've joined them to honor his life and also to share in your own recollections. Later in the service, there will be time to share memories or stories of Ron's life, and we hope that some family and friends will be able to come forward to share. Thank you as well to the directors and staff here at Carpenters for their caring service to the family during this time. So I had the opportunity to meet with Randy and Vicki in order to prepare for today's service, and they talked about the life that Ron created for himself and for those close to him. I heard stories of family and friends, hard work and solid work ethic, and most importantly, taking good care of and providing for the people you love. They talked about his personality, that he had an insatiable desire to create and build that he had skills to build or fix anything and was happiest in the garage and running that heavy equipment, that he was a natural coordinator with a positive can-do attitude, that no project was too large or challenging for him, and also no project was too small or insignificant for him to take care of. His mind was built for math, science, and the precision of engineering and construction, and they said he was a visionary thinker, that he had the ability to anticipate potential future problems and proactively correct them before they became problems, and that he sometimes had the nature of a bull in a china shop if he needed to get his way. So we'll begin with some of Ron's story. Ronald M. Rhodes was born on November 28th, 1930, in Corning, New York, the oldest of five children born to the late John E. Rhodes and Margaret E. Oldfield Rhodes with his siblings, Basil, Margie, Dick, and Butch. Growing up, Ron's family raised chickens and other animals, and many times the care of the chickens fell to Ron while his father was at work, and he really hated doing that. It led to a lifelong aversion to eating chicken or turkey. <laughs> but he still loved to eat two eggs every morning at breakfast, along with the standard steak and potatoes diet, 
including about two pounds of butter a week, I hear. Vicky said that he used to use about a one-to-one -one ratio between butter and potato. Ron attended Northside School in Corning, and like so many of his generation, formal schooling ended after eighth grade in 1943. While he was in school, he met Margaret Barney, and they were married young in 1947. They had five children together, Rodney, twins Ruth and Rita, Randy and Stephen. With Ron's love of building things, he built the family home where the kids grew up between Beaver Dams and Beaver Valley, along with two other homes. Randy has memories of his dad working around the house and said that if he was somewhere where the machinery was running and it was too loud for Ron to yell to him, Ron would communicate by tossing a stone in his direction to get his attention, not necessarily to hit him. <laughs> After Ron's formal schooling had ended, he immediately began working. He held many jobs over the course of his life, and his work was a source of great pride for him. It allowed him to use his problem-solving skills in many areas, to do a lot of traveling, and because he was so well-rounded to be someone who could communicate with anyone. First, he earned a certification and worked as a milk inspector. He worked in logging as a refrigerator salesman and led several above-ground mining operations. His career moved in the direction of heavy construction and operating heavy equipment, the bigger the better. He was highly skilled at working complex cranes. These jobs led him to building such large projects as the New York State Thruway and various pipelines and interstates around the eastern United States. He spent 30 years as a pipeliner, often as the supervisor. He was respected as a boss, but could also relate to the workers he was supervising. He would go out with them on a Friday night to have one drink and then leave them to have their evening. He was known to pull an employee into his office for a lecture if they, he heard that they were not being a good provider to their family. On the job, Ron's co-workers nicknamed him cup joint, which is the short joint between two pipes. They joked good naturedly that it was because he was short and squatty at 5'2", but they all knew how physically strong he was. Randy remembers that he could lift a full 55-gallon drum into a truck by himself. He was a member of the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 832 out of Rochester, for over 50 years and received his 50-year gold watch from them. Outside of work, Ron enjoyed country music, and he liked to dance and go see live music. He loved a country two-step, but in his own way, just as everything in life was his own way, Ron Rhodes style. He also enjoyed family reunion picnics and helped many family members get through difficult times. He held an interest in communication technology whether it was moving from the old original phone lines called the party lines where you shared it with other people to a private landline in his house to two private lines in the house. He liked CB radios, the original phones that were set up in vehicles that he had in his truck, and all the iterations of personal cell phones that we've seen over the last years, flip, flip phones and all. Ron didn't have a formal retirement as his work was project-based, and he continued to take job after job. Later in life, he took care of the trailer court where he lived, and he continued to drive up until just about five years ago. He modified his house over the past few years and set up an Alexa system to call people, turn on the lights, and turn on the fan, all using voice command. He even brought out that bull in a china shop nature once again, against town bureaucracy and variance, variances to be able to build an accessibility ramp to his home using the logic that if I wait until I need it, I'm not gonna be able to build it. And he got his way one way or the other. 
Ron's family expressed gratitude that he remained strong mentally and emotionally until the very end of his life. And despite his body breaking down, he maintained an active lifestyle as long as he could. They also expressed gratitude for the people who supported him in his home, allowing him to remain at home until just a month before his passing. And I especially appreciated the story that he and a friend had a covert operations breakout plan to spring him from the Shimon County Nursing Facility. How fortunate you all were to have known him. And now Ron's son Randy is gonna come forward to speak. Barb, I think we need a shorter podium here. <laughs> this is. Uh, <laughs> no, that's okay. <clears throat> so we're really here to celebrate my dad's life, right? So, we really did want him to do that. <laughs> It'll be a minute. So, everybody just relax, <laughs> enjoy. So I, uh, hey, Aaron, I think I need some of your skills. <laughs> so Aaron is a priest uh, down at uh, the Presbyterian Church in, uh, in Horsehead. He's really good at public speaking. So, so I, I characterize my dad as a proud an intelligent man, a confident man, a man who knew exactly what he, wa he was and what he wanted, a man of significant work ethic, and I am uh, I'm honored to be his son. He, uh, let me say that again, I'm really honored to be his son. Um, he taught me many, many skills and trades and that nothing was too large to tackle. No problem was too large for Ron, as you mentioned, Barb. Uh, he had an insatiable desire to build. He was all, always willing to help guide me through difficult issues and it really didn't matter whether he had the expertise or not, <laughs> right? Didn't matter. Uh, he, uh, he showed me how to lift up a house and construct a basement underneath it um, all the time while we were uh, still living in the house, right? So that's the kind of guy he was. He taught me metallurgy and the properties of materials. He showed me how to dissect complex systems and figure out how things worked. He explained mechanical engineering, the participating physics of what, whatever we happen to be focused on at that particular time. Now, in reality, he didn't specifically and intentionally teach me any of these things. Okay. Rather... You know, he learned all of these things through life, and if you listened to what he had to say, you could learn. Ron was a wealth of knowledge, no question about that. I 
was very careful and selective to listen and learn. Right? You got to be selective. Um, he gave me the confidence to overcome and adapt to almost anything, like public speaking in this environment, right? So you just take your time and you can get there, right? Um, he taught me to save and plan for the future, never have mounting debt, and enjoy life. To this, I'm really thankful and blessed. When I think of Ron, I think of the serenity prayer. Are you guys familiar with the serenity prayer? Well, let me just, those who are not familiar, let me read it. So it goes like this. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change things that I can, and the most important part is the wisdom to know the difference, right? Part of Ron's challenges throughout his life was actually knowing the difference. You're supposed to laugh at that, <laughs> okay? Right, because he thought he could change anything he wanted. Right? He always liked to control his world, and later in life, if he needed something done, he would simply give you step-by-step -step instruction. Right? Right, Jamie? Right? Step-by-step -step instructions, which, if followed in sequential order, would actually result in something quite amazing. Right? If you're anything like me, those instructions generated frustration and annoyance. Yeah but it was his way of maintaining some semblance of control. Ron was a colorful man with clear view on how life should be led and how things should be done. He often sheltered his feelings. Deep down, he loved his family, thoroughly enjoyed summer picnics, and having everyone together. Um, he had a uh, charming smile, a deep laugh, and sought out music and dance with friends. So um, I like to quote people once in a while, you know. So uh, Stephen Hawkins said, intelligence is the ability to adapt to change. And Ron saw lots of change in his life and admirably and creatively adapted at every stage. Thank you. Beautiful. At this time, I'd like to give family and friends the opportunity to share a memory or story about Ron. If you can, please come forward and speak into the microphone. I can also bring the microphone out to you if you wave at me. And if neither of those sound good, you can just stand where you are and project your voice. And just be sure that you tell us who you are. really good at public speaking either. I'm Sherry. I'm Ron's niece, his only sister's oldest. And um, I, I, when I think of Uncle Ron, I think of um, just joy, that laugh of his. And I think everybody in this room knows that laugh. The belly laugh just was infectious. One of my fondest memories is I was so proud of myself. I don't know how old I was, just a child, but I learned how to jump rope. And I went down to his house and I said, watch Uncle Ron, watch. And I started jumping rope and he, and he said, is your shoes untied, sis? Because he always called us sis. And it, of course I looked down and I messed up my jump roping and he laughed and laughed so hard. And um, that's just one of my very fond memories of him. Um, his laughter, always wanting to be with his family and, and making people happy. So 
Thank you. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to make through. Uh, he made sure that I could make a dollar in any state I went to. I could always feed my family because of the man. <sighs> I'm Jamie's oldest grandson. I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm, I'm Rod's son. Because of him, I have two kids that are Kaya and Xavier that are fed well and I can take care of them because of what that man taught me. I don't know what else to say, but I'm going to miss him. I'm kind of the one that I made a lot of eggs for him. I laid up, made a lot of potatoes for him. I pumped a lot of that butter into him. <laughs> and I'm going to miss him. That's all I have. Is there anyone else? We have time. Okay. So during our family meeting, I was really taken by the way that Randy and Vicki spoke about how best to remember Ron today. They were so respectful of his accomplishments and also remembering with a lot of love and humor about his general presence in the world. They conveyed that, yes, Ron's loss is, his death is a loss for his its loved ones. And it's a joyous affair to celebrate someone who lived 91 years, who had a full range of experiences, who had good relationships with family and friends and colleagues, and who adapted and overcame the challenges in his life. And I can't help but think that this pragmatic attitude and their support for each other is how your family has coped with hardship all along, especially within the past month of navigating Ron's last days. And I believe that Ron's lessons of adaptability will be so valuable in your healing going forward. I hope those lessons carry you with grace through these early days of grief and into the coming years while you take on your challenges. And to those who showed up today to support Ron's family, they thank you again. And please be in touch with them to share your stories and memories. They're going to need your presence, your ability to hold space with them, and your willingness to speak Ron's name. Oh, I'm out of order. Excuse me. Okay. 
So as we close today, we remember that while we're going to say goodbye to Ron's physical presence, it doesn't affect our memories of his personality, his character, his spirit, or his impact on the people whom he loved. All of these will live with you in your thoughts and memories. We'll continue to send love and support to Ron's family as well as all who knew and cared for him. And Ron, we thank you for the gifts that you have given to your family. Your influence will be seen for generations as your children and grandchildren care for each other and continue to parent their own children. We leave Ron in peace and bid him a loving farewell. The family would like to invite you all to a reception at the Corning Moose Club that's going to start at noon today. As you come forward to pay your last respects here at the funeral home, you'll hear a song chosen by Randy and Vicki to honor Ron. It's, Oh Lord, It's Hard to Be Humble, <laughs> performed by Willie Nelson. <laughs> And I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's truly been an honor. <laughs> yes, sir. Hi, I'm Richard, Wonka's brother. We have a card on the table out there. We'd appreciate it if anyone would like to sign it, would sign it. And it will go back home in the Bible. Okay. Okay. Please sign the card. Thank you. So Funeral Director Pete Russell is going to come back forward for dismissal, and I thank you so much. Thank you, Barb. Ladies and gentlemen, this does conclude the services here in the funeral home today. At this time, you may come forward to the casket, maybe touch the casket, maybe pay your last respects, or you may come forward and maybe take a piece of flowers, a flower out of one of the flower pieces. Thank you for attending. <laughs>